My new direct drive steering wheel is working well and I've been able to use the old pedals from my Logitech wheel by just leaving the old wheel plugged in without its power supply. The lack of a clutch is beginning to get to me though and the springs in these pedals are so light that I just can't tell when I'm locking the brakes up. You guys have made it abundantly clear that you want to see me build some pedals, so let's get straight into it and see what we can come up with. I have a couple of simple goals in mind for this project. I want to make it as cheap and accessible as possible without compromising the finished product. I want to use Hall Effect sensors for the throttle and clutch and a load cell for the brake. Oh yeah, and it's got to look cool too. Since I've never owned a proper set of sim pedals before, I thought I'd better start out by looking at some other people's designs. It didn't take too much Googling before I stumbled across this gorgeous design by someone called Hi I'm Sean over on Printables. It's so close to what I already wanted to do that I actually spent a couple of days just contemplating building his design for this video instead. Ultimately though, I decided there was a few things I'd do differently just out of personal preference, so I designed my own version. In order to keep this design as cheap as possible, I want to 3D print everything that I can. I know there are a few fully printed designs out there, but since I can't print any of the fancy high strength materials, I am worried about how they're going to hold up over time. 3D prints do work really well in compression though, so what we can print are all the spaces and bushes that we need. I spent a lot of time on this design, just trying to work out a strong and functional way of making the pedal arms and frames out of some sort of aluminium extrusion or channel, as I really wanted to avoid laser cutting to keep the price down if possible. Everything I came up with though was making a compromise in one way or another and I just wasn't happy with the results I was getting. Then I had an idea. What if I still laser cut all the parts, but I make all the pedals the same so you can just order duplicates of the parts? I tried uploading a part and found that the per unit price on most cut services drops by about 30 to 35% when ordering five or more of the same part, which should mean a pretty big saving on the entire project if I can keep the parts count to a minimum. The only remaining problem is that the design is going to require some folds. Places like PCBWay can fold your parts for you, but it's going to add to the cost, so I'd like to find a way that most people could do it at home if they wanted to save a few extra dollars. I already know from the last video that trying to fold 3mm steel plate by hand in a vise can be a challenge, even with some relief cutouts. The remaining plate was almost 60mm wide though, so if I can keep the parts that need to be folded to about half that width or less, anyone with a vise should be able to fold them at home. With all of the design considerations out of the way, I'm going to fire up the fibre laser and rip out some parts. If you don't have access to a fibre laser, this video sponsor can help. PCBWay do all types of manufacturing including printed circuit boards, machining, 3D printing and even sheet metal fabrication. If you wanted to, they could make every part of this project for you and ship it to your doorstep ready for you to assemble. They help me make these videos possible, so make sure you pay them a visit next time you need their services at the link in the video description. Alright, now I've got a whole pile of laser cut parts, it's time to start preparing them for assembly. The first step I need to take is to give them all a quick clean. When the parts come out of a laser cutter, there can still be small bits of molten metal stuck on the back side of the cut, but a grinder makes short work of them. If PCBWay made your parts, you can skip this step because they do it for you. Next, there's a few parts we need to fold. This is the base plate for the pedals, and they all need their tabs bent up to 90 degrees. I've included little triangle indicators in the cut fold to show where you need to fold, so just line them up with the edge of your vise and give them a bend. Just be sure to make pairs of these plates when you're bending them, as the tabs both need to point outwards, so you'll need to fold three of them one way and three the other. Next, we need to bend these two spring mounting plates. Do these the same as the first ones, just line the notches up and bend both tabs up 90 degrees. There's another spring mounting plate for the brake pedal. It's basically the same part, just a little shorter, so you can do the same to it. Last but not least, this is part of the load cell for the brake. Both of its tabs need to be folded up 90 degrees too. Because they're a bit close together for my vise, I'm going to have to get a bit creative about folding the second tab. I ended up holding the part sideways in the vise and tapping it over with a hammer. With everything folded up, now is a perfect time to chuck some paint on our parts. For steel parts, I like to start off with a spray of etch primer as it dries very fast and ensures your top coat will stick well. Once the primer is dry, it's time for a top coat of some gloss black. While that dries, let's print some parts. You should be able to fit everything you need on the build plate of most printers at the same time, but it does result in a pretty long print. I've broken mine up into a couple of groups so I can easily keep an eye on the printer while it's running. I'm printing all of these parts in just regular old PLA Plus as it should be good enough for what we need and obviously makes the printing as easy as it can be. I'm also using a raft as I found it was more reliable at keeping the long tubes in place while printing. Now that we've got all the parts finished, let's put these together. 
starting off with the pedal arms. These are all the same as each other except for the throttle pedal as it has a larger printed support as its pedal is longer. Let's start off by pressing the bearings into the bottom pivot. These are the super common 625 size bearings. I picked up a packet of 20 of these for $8 off Amazon, so it's worth using bearings as they are less effort than shimming the joints to get nice smooth movement. Make sure you include the crush tube between the bearings so we can do the bolt up nice and tight without causing any damage. The bearings stick out of the plastic by 3mm so they can pass through the arm, which is where the support is really needed. We finish off this bottom joint with a 40mm M5 bolt and a nut to hold it all in place. Don't do any of the nuts up tightly until the whole pedal arm is assembled. Next you can install the mid spacer. This part is just a spacer and it has two little dots on the top that drop into these holes simply to stop it from rotating. I'll put another nut and bolt here and then move up to the pedal mounting bracket. There are two variants of this part. The longer one is for the throttle pedal as the bottom of the pedal plate needed a bit more support. They all mount in the same manner though, just two M5 bolts through the lot with nuts on the other side. Make sure the curved sides of these parts is facing outwards. And that's the whole pedal arm assembled. If this is a throttle or a clutch pedal, now's a good time to glue the magnet into the arm pivot that will be used to sense its position. And then you can finish it off by tightening up all the bolts. Now we can build a base. Grab a pair of base plates and put an M5 by 50 bolt through one side, followed by a washer. The pedal arm, another washer, and then the other side with a nut. Use a printed spacer at the back here with another bolt, and the third one goes in this slot. This is used to adjust the backstop position of the pedal. Now we need a spring. I picked up a couple of different options from my local hardware store, but these ones look the strongest, so I'll start with them and see how it feels. Start with the spring plate we folded earlier and press the printed slide bush in from the outside. Next, you'll need one of these 6mm lock collars and a long M6 bolt that's at least 130mm in length. Slide the lock collar right down to the head of the bolt and then slide the bolt through the printed slide bush. You may need to run a drill carefully through this bush to ensure it's a nice sliding fit on the bolt. A bit of grease or something will go a long way here to ensure this part wears as little as possible. Once that is done, follow it up with the printed spring seat the spring itself, another printed spring seat, then a large washer and an M6 nylock nut. You may need a spacer between the nut and the washer to get the strength and position of the spring right for your preference, depending on the spring you used. I just scaled up the clever spacer model to be the length I wanted and printed it, which worked fine. Next, we just need to screw the M6 clevis onto the end of the bolt and then install it into the back of the pedal arm with two of the printed clever spacers and an M6 by 40 bolt. The set of holes you choose for this will depend on which pedal you are building, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Finally, bolt the spring mounting bracket onto one of the hole pairs at the back of the pedal base using some short M5 bolts with lock nuts to keep them in place. You'll also need a washer between these parts so they don't rub on each other. Don't over tighten these as we're relying on the bolt turning freely in the holes for this pivot point to work. I accidentally bought 15mm long bolts for these, but you should probably get 12mm so they don't hit the springs. I'll just trim mine down with a grinder. Now, let's talk about the sets of holes. Since all three pedals need to have a different feel, you will probably end up with a different combination on all three sets. For the clutch, I found having the front bolts either level or slightly lower than the rear set helps to achieve an over center feel at the bottom of the pedal movement. I've used the second bottom set on the front and the second top set on the rear for mine. You probably want the throttle to be pretty linear, so using a higher set on the front and a lower set on the back will help prevent the pedal from having the over-centering effect that we wanted on the clutch. The brake is different again because it uses a load cell, so let's look at that now. When you assemble the base of the brake, you will also need to ensure that these two plates are sandwiched between the pedal base halves as they provide a mounting point for the load cell. I used the 200 kilo version of the NA151 sensor as it seems to be one of the smallest available for that level of load. The end with two bolt holes goes between these two plates and gets bolted in place with two more M5 by 40 bolts. The load cell bracket gets bolted on through the larger hole on this end. I still used an M5 bolt here since it should be strong enough for our purposes, but you will need a washer on the bottom to ensure the nut doesn't pull into the hole when you tighten it. The brake spring mount is set up exactly the same way as the clutch and throttle, except it uses a combination of bushes and a spring to get the feel right. Sets of these bushes are available in varying softness levels, but I left my run too late to order them, so I've had a go at printing my own using eSun's 83A TPE material. I've found by setting the walls of the print to zero, we can print a spacer with just infill and the front and rear layer, 
which allows it to compress nice and consistently and means I can vary the softness by just changing the infill value. Here's one I printed at 50% infill and then one I printed at 80% infill. I'll probably end up fine tuning these values once I actually use the pedals, but for now, this will do. Now we just need a frame to mount them all on. I'm gonna cut up some 2020 extrusion into two different lengths, 370 mil for the front and rear beams and 130 mil for the sides. I'll use a couple of these aluminum corner brackets to hold it all together and then we can bolt the pedals in place. I'm going to put the brake right in the middle and then space the throttle and clutch out until they look about right. I made the frame a bit wider than I think it needs to be, so I should have a bit of room to move them further apart if needed. Now, there's only one part left before we begin on the electronics, the pedal plates. I've uploaded some fully printed pedal plates so you guys can have the cheapest option available to you if you wish, but you've all seen the thumbnail, I'm making mine out of metal. I cut the pedal plates out of some pretty soft 5051 aluminium and I've given them a quick sand with my orbital sander to get rid of any of the burrs. I could just leave them flat, but I'd rather they all had a slight radius to them like real pedals. So I printed these forming tools and we're gonna squeeze them in the vise and see what happens. That looks like it worked even better than I expected. Now I'll just give the pedals a quick buff with some polish to make them nice and shiny and finally bolt them in place with some M4 screws. And that's it for the mechanical stuff. My plan is to eventually integrate the shifter, pedals and wheel all as one device. But this video is already getting pretty long, so for today, I'm just gonna wire these up to an Arduino separately so we can at least test them. The throttle and clutch both use a linear Hall effect sensor to measure their position. I'm going to solder wires up to the legs of the sensor and then glue it to the 3D printed bracket. The pinout on mine goes supply voltage, ground and then output but you should check the data sheet on your sensors to ensure they are the same before wiring. This bracket screws into these two slots with M3 bolts. To get the height correct, just press the pedal in all the way and lift the sensor up until it just touches the magnet. On the other end of the wires, we're going to connect power and ground to the respective spots on the Arduino. And the signal wire is going to any one of the available analog inputs. Now for the brake pedal. I picked up this HX711 load cell amplifier to use with our load cell. E plus and E minus go to the red and black wires on the cell, and the green and white wires go to A minus and A plus. Ground and VCC go to their corresponding pins on the Arduino, and DT and SCK go to digital pins two and three respectively. With a quick bit of code, I'm able to read the position of all three of the pedals with the Arduino, but I've noticed a problem. The polling rate on this HX711 board is only 10 hertz, meaning we can only update the position of the brake pedal 10 times a second. Fortunately, the HX711 chip also has an 80 hertz polling mode, which should be much more usable. We just need to desolder the IC, bend pin 15 up so it doesn't make contact with the board, and then bridge pins 15 and 16 with solder when we resolder the chip back onto the board. I also ended up making a last minute change to how the load cell is mounted as the pedal wasn't transferring the pressure to it as well as it hoped. Now, we have a usable output, let's give this a test. I'm really happy with that. I think I'll reprint the bushes for the brake at maybe 65% infill, as these are a bit too soft still for my liking. I can't really test the clutch yet because I can't easily connect the shifter at the same time currently, but the pedal feels pretty convincing so far at least. All the project files are already up on the GitHub ready to go if you wanna make your own set. Now I just need a proper sim rig so I can set all of this up permanently. Let me know what you think in the comments or if you have any suggestions for future projects. Thanks for watching.